Everyone who has stumbled their way into the arena has heard that infamous crackle as they watch their team fall one by one at the hands of Reinhardt, one of the most unlikeliest characters to become such an infamous figure in Fire Emblem Heroes. In this video, I'll be looking at what exactly happened to make this man so feared, hated, but also loved and respected. The story of Reinhardt is the perfect backdrop for taking a look back at some of Fire Emblem Heroes' history. The game has come a long way, and almost from the very start, Reinhardt has played a major role in shaping it to what we continue playing today. For old veterans, I hope this will be a fun trip down memory lane, and for you new players, I hope this video will give you some understanding into how the community has evolved, along with a look at some of the game's most important events. That's enough chit chat, let's dive right in. This must be fate. Reinhardt is a non-playable boss character in the fifth main Fire Emblem game titled Thracia 776. Now for most Western Fire Emblem fans, you probably never even heard of this guy or even knew much about Thracia 776 at all. This is mainly due to the fact that it was only released in Japan in late 1999 and never did get an official Western release. Basically, to most of the non-Japanese speaking audience, Reinhardt was a nobody in terms of iconic Fire Emblem characters. When Fire Emblem Heroes was announced, it had a special Choose Your Legends voting event where fans could vote for their favorite characters and the male and female winners would receive a special outfit. This vote could also help determine which units were popular enough to get into Heroes faster. Thracia 776's main lord, protagonist Leaf, only received 1,751 votes, not even placing in the top 100. Reinhardt did even worse, only receiving a mere 137 votes, ending up in 584th place. If you saw this list, you would never expect to see Reinhardt in the game anytime soon. Fast forward to February 27, 2017, Heroes had officially launched on February 2nd, and now its second new unit banner was coming out. The Sibling Bonds banner featured pairs of siblings except for Tanaki and Klein. Most importantly, Reinhardt and his sister Owen step onto the scene. Reinhardt's base kit and stat line were okay. In a time where skill inheritance was not in the game yet, he wasn't the worst unit out there. His Dire Thunder Tome was a brave type weapon, meaning it could strike twice when initiating, however it came with a minus 5 speed penalty. People did not hold him in such high regards at the start, making fun of his disastrous 18 speed after Dire Thunder's penalty, and you had comments like this guy is so slow even Hector could double him. Vantage also wasn't the greatest skill for a brave type weapon, since it's a purely defensive skill while Dire Thunder wants to focus on the player phase offense. You also had the memes about his somewhat small hands in his artwork. For the most part, Reinhardt still deleted a bunch of red units because he's still a blue mage who could hit two times. What really hurt his value was that at the time arena rating was purely based on the base stat totals, or BST, of your units. Reinhardt had a really low BST because he was a cavalry unit, was a ranged mage, and then even his Dire Thunder's minus 5 speed penalty was also factored in. Essentially, while Reinhardt was a pretty good player phase anti-red unit, using him meant you lowered your arena rating by a lot and many people didn't think it was worth the trouble. As the Sibling Bonds banner ended, there are a few important things to note. 1. Reinhardt is demoted into the 4 star summoning pool, meaning players had a way higher chance to just get him randomly. 2. Reinhardt will appear on two more banners in the near future, one being the Battling Zephyo banner on April 20th, and the second being the Heroes with Vantage banner on June 12th. The fact that Reinhardt is moved into the 4 star pool is a huge factor as to why so many more people could get him in the long run. 5 star exclusive units are extremely hard to come by, and this outcome would have a cascading effect in the future. I'll give it my all. On March 16, 2017, Skill Inheritance arrives and would change the game massively. In Reinhardt's case, he gets access to an A skill and Deathblow 3 is the obvious choice since it boosts attack by 6 when he initiates a fight. Landsbreaker was another popular B skill, mainly to ensure kills on tanky units like Effie who could survive if Reinhardt wasn't at full power. He could also equip a lower cooldown special like Moonbow or Luna for more consistent damage. The last main outcome of Skill Inheritance is that now any cavalry unit could inherit home cavalry to buff up Reinhardt's attack by another 6 points. People are not tied down to using Gunter, who wasn't really a great unit. After Skill Inheritance, Reinhardt was an absolute monster who not only destroyed red units, but blue, green, and colorless units as well. Many people didn't have anyone who could stop his extremely high damage output, and people started figuring out this guy was really worth using, maybe not in Arena, but definitely for any PvE content. If you want to know why Owen sort of got ignored despite also having access to Dire Thunder, the main reason is their difference in base attack stat. Reinhardt held 6 more base attack, and for a brave weapon, that's essentially 12 more points of damage, which is huge. Owen was also stuck as a 5 star exclusive, meaning Reinhardt was easier to get, and he did more damage. Owen has her own benefits with her high base speed, but Reinhardt became the king of thunder for most people. A month after skill inheritance, there is a huge event that propels Reinhardt into the arena meta. 
On April 12th, arena scoring is changed and now units are not only scored on their BST alone. This change meant cavalry units and ranged units like Reinhardt weren't so heavily penalized and it allowed people to use them without just tanking their overall score. This change to the arena scoring formula jumpstarts the rise of Horse Emblem. Cavalry units and their 3 movement were a real pain to deal with and you could be overrun real fast if you weren't able to stop them. As a result of skill inheritance, hone and fortify cavalry can be passed on to any cavalry ally, making it easy to create a team that was receiving plus 6 buffs to every stat. Because of this, cavalry mages who could inherit a blade tome like Leo or Cecilia became incredible threats and Reinhardt with his 2 hit Dire Thunder also led the way. As the game continued, people could also get access to Xander and Camus shortly after and these are two really powerful cavalry units who were free for players to earn. Horse Emblem teams became a common sight for most players and many people expressed their dislike playing against them every single fight. Literally a week after these changes go through and people start to realize how good Reinhardt and Horse Emblem is, he gets featured on the Battling's FEL banner. This was another way for people to nab a Reinhardt for themselves and I bet you a lot of people summoned to try and get him. Not only was he a threat in Arena, but Reinhardt as well as Horse Emblem teams would also stomp PvE content and was a major help to those who had him. You will back down. Now this is a fun memory because on June 8th, the first Tempest Trials event begins. If you thought Tempest Trials was hard now, oh man, it was so much worse. Basically, this first Tempest Trials event was awful to farm to get all the rewards. There was no 3x daily bonus, your bonus units had no boosted stats, and you received lower scores for the normal and hard difficulties, meaning if you weren't doing lunatic levels you were going to be farming for a very long time. This also meant auto battling wasn't a great strategy because the AI wasn't strong enough to beat the lunatic levels consistently, but the hard and normal difficulties gave you so little points it wasn't worth doing. Also, the last map with Veronica as the boss was absolutely brutal and let's just say that personally I never made it close to getting 99,000 points. There was a shining light to this dark gauntlet however and that was the Quicken Pulse Sacred Seal which you got after 50,000 grueling points. This skill would decrease special cooldown by minus 1 at the start of a fight meaning you got to proc specials faster. For Reinhardt, the Quicken Pulse seal was like obtaining the last piece of Exodia. With it, he could use Moonbow and it would be on a 1 turn cooldown once the fight had started. Because Dire Thunder hits twice immediately, the first hit would charge Moonbow and then the second hit would proc it, meaning Reinhardt's insane damage output just got higher. With this infamous combo, Reinhardt could actually take out some green units who could survive him beforehand and in general this just meant his kill list just kept getting longer. At the time, players just didn't have anybody who could survive this 2 hit knockout, meaning you could not let him touch any of your units first. This build is truly one of the most horrific things to plague the game. As if things weren't bad enough, there was another banner with Reinhardt only a few days after people started seeing what the Quicken Pulse and Moonbow combo could do. It's very clear that the developers started to realize that they had created a monster, and since then, Reinhardt has not appeared on another banner. All these different factors had created the perfect thunderstorm for Reinhardt to succeed. Not being locked to the 5 star pool, skill inheritance, the arena scoring changes, the rise of horse emblem and the quick and pulse and moonbow combo were all things that made him incredibly potent. Reinhardt had quickly become public enemy number 1 and there were no shortage of memes for people to express their fear and distaste for this man. For the common player, you would find Reinhardt in almost every arena match and people started to create dedicated counters just for him. Things were so bad that even intelligent systems had started to trickle in counters to Reinhardt in some way. Brave Ike's Irvin and Bjork's Blessing and his green color made him a perfect tank against Reinhardt. Sigurd's insane Divine Tearfing and Crusader's Word combo meant it was almost impossible for Reinhardt to KO him. This is crazy because Sigurd is a red unit meaning Reinhardt is already getting extra damage and he still can't kill him. There was also mage tanks like Deirdre and people had started to build up other green mages with high resistance. There were even powerful skills people started using like deflect magic, guard, and distant defense was needed so badly it got a sacred seal form pretty fast. Reinhardt was the meta and everyone either used him or had to face him. I will remain with you, no matter the circumstances. Now this is where Reinhardt's story takes an extremely weird turn. The Ira incident was a negative backlash from the community in regards to how Ira was introduced into the game. This was on October 19, 2017 and essentially, Ira was the first banner unit ever released without some sort of notification. She was briefly seen in the Holy War banner trailer, but it was never stated when or how we would get her. Turns out, she came on a separate banner with old units and to make things even worse, she was sharing the red focus color with Eldegan. 
This banner came out literally like 3 days after the Holy War banner for the upcoming Tempest Trials and many people felt completely baited by intelligent systems. Ira was also the center of an incredibly hot topic of power creep and she was and maybe still is the best offensive red sword unit in the game. Basically, the community felt that Ira was a very blatant cash grab and everyone had already spent their orbs on the actual new banner. In the end, Ira's introduction left a very bad taste in people's mouths, and many had lost some trust in intelligent systems. For the most part, Fire Emblem Heroes was a pretty generous gacha game, but this incident made people worry for what the future held. Did this mean other new units would show up on banners by themselves? Was the game already starting its power creep climb? And would intelligent systems start only putting out banners, clearly only for whales who spent thousands of dollars? This was a dark time and many people were worried that the game was going in a bad direction. Very shortly after the surprise announcement of Ira, Reddit user Tolwithin made a post on the Fire Emblem Heroes subreddit of a tweet he translated. This tweet by Dylan Bricker, also known as God Mo or God Moe, on Reddit was targeted at the official Japanese Twitter account for Fire Emblem Heroes, specifically replying to the tweet about Ira's new banner. In somewhat broken Japanese, this tweet translated by Bing became I know money for you, I now use the Reinhardt. I now use the Reinhardt. This simple phrase would become a community meme that was the rallying cry against how Ira was introduced. As mentioned, Ira was looking like one of the most powerful sword units in the game, but like many red units, she falls immediately to two dire thunderstrikes from Reinhardt. Beyond that, people were so dissatisfied with the way they handled Ira that players would rather side with one of the most hated units in the game. The Reinhardt or the Reinhardt became a positive meme people could get behind because while he was incredibly OP and terrible to face against, everyone knew how good it felt to use Reinhardt for themselves. He became the symbol against intelligent system shady intent and the community wanted to make it clear they were against it. Instead of memes hating on Reinhardt, people were supporting him and cheering him on against the new age of power creep. There was fan art and even people cosplaying as this dude who wasn't even a playable character in his own game. The Reinhardt had gone from public enemy number one to more of a love-hate relationship among the fanbase. I think it helped that he has some great artwork and his voice lines by Chris Smith are absolutely amazing, if not a bit meme -y. That includes his most famous line. Magic is everything! Reinhardt's impact on the game cannot be understated. The sheer amount of times you would see him in Arena and Arena Assault forced people to start making multiple counters for him. Green mages like Fimo Robin, Julia, and Deirdre were popular ways to gain the upper hand with the weapon Triangle. Faye being the only green dragon for a long time could also be a good counter with an inherent lightning breath weapon. Literally any green unit with Triangle Adept or an Emerald Axe Gem weapon could be a potential answer. The use of a green mage with the Raven Tome and Triangle Adept combo was one of the best builds to tackle Reinhardt because it also served another purpose in stopping a certain cavalry archer who became just as annoying as the legend himself. However, that's a tale for another video. While Reinhardt became a popular unit in Arena, he did also wreak havoc on some of the PvE content the game had to offer. In this way, Reinhardt was absolutely a beloved unit to take on some of the game's hardest battles, and it started to become obvious that the developers at Intention Systems had to go out of their way to stop Reinhardt from clearing everything. One of the best examples of this is when Xander's Grand Heroes battle returned with an Infernal difficulty. Xander himself had some interesting skills and literally every single one is meant to stop Reinhardt from one-shotting him. Water boost gives extra res, guard stops any special charges, and panic ploy made sure you couldn't boost Reinhardt with home cavalry easily. Aegis being on a one-turn cooldown is also funny, and with the 50% damage reduction on the second hit, there is no way a normal Reinhardt can one-shot this Xander. Intelligent systems had created a monster they themselves had to worry about. Outside the game, Reinhardt had clearly won over many people's hearts, and in the second Choose Your Legends voting event, he managed to place 5th with 15,931 votes, a massive improvement compared to just over a year ago. For comparison, Port Leaf actually fell behind Reinhardt with only 9,001 votes, placing in 9th. Now originally, this video should have ended right here, but the World of Thracia banner held a surprise and Reinhardt was actually getting another version of himself. This Reinhardt carries a sword and is an incredibly powerful brave sword that always hits 2 times no matter what phase it is. I truly believe that there is no way he should have appeared again so soon if he didn't become so infamous and popular among the heroes fanbase. With legendary heroes becoming a thing, I would legitimately be surprised if Reinhardt doesn't become one. 
Reinhardt's story is an incredibly crazy tale of one of Fire Emblem's least known characters, becoming a huge influence in a game literally filled with every popular main character of the franchise. Heroes gave people a chance to get to know him, and I think it's great that Western fans can learn about some of the older games not released internationally. A controversial character for sure, but I think it's clear that Reinhardt's wild ride is far from over, and we still have to see what chaos he can bring when wielding his Master Sword.